information, and 60% is going to come from AMP2. Um, and then it tells you exactly which models and which charts I'm going to use. So this should be pretty helpful for you guys, hopefully, to study from. So I'm just going to basically go through everything that I listed on the review sheet and point out the model and or chart that I'm using and go through a lot of the structures that you can see on there. So starting with the AMP1 stuff. So a little less than half of the practical is going to be on AMP1 structures. But I definitely will choose the terms. And I, I left a lot of the like really hard things off of your list to begin with. But I'm going to choose the things that I think you, would be most memorable from AMP1. So it's going to be all major bones, with the exception of one question. It's going to be a bone marking that you guys definitely learned about. So I'll give you the options for the bone marking even. So for that skeletal system section, I will use a skull and a skeleton. I'm not going to have the bones of the skeleton loose like you may have had for your AMP1 practical. So I'm not going to have like the humerus and the tibia and the fibula separate. It makes it harder to identify. So I will ask them as part of the skeleton. All right, so just to review the major bones on here. Um, I don't. Yeah, I need to put them out. They are posted on the Blackboard. And you can find like a really detailed list in there. I just remove some of the things that are on there. Okay, so clavicles on the back. Scapula, those are the shoulder blades. The sternum is the breastbone that the ribs are attached to. There are true ribs. These are the first seven that are directly connected to the sternum. And then the bottom five are called false ribs because they are either indirectly connected or not at all connected, like these last two, to the sternum. Uh, what's this bone? Humerus. Yep. The lower arm can be a little bit tricky. I, I think the best way to remember is if you look at this one, the top of this one, I don't know if you guys can see this one, it has a U-shaped curve at the top. The other bone is totally flat at the top. The one with that curve is the ulna. I always remember the U, like U for ulna, there's that U-shaped curve at the top of it. So if that helps you guys remember, you can use that trick. So this one is the ulna. This one is the radius, the one with the flat top. Okay. Remember the wrist bone? Carpal. Yeah. Hand. Are. Metacarpal, right? And then phalange are the finger. In the leg, what's this bone? Femur, right. And then the lower leg is a little easier because they don't look exactly the same, like the lower arm. Do you remember the bigger one that's medial? Is the tibia, right? The fibula is the thinner one that's lateral. The patella, the kneecap. Do you remember the ankle bones? The wrists are carpals. The ankle is tarsal. So if hand is metacarpals, the foot is metatarsals, right? And then phalanges, the same name for the fingers and the toes, all right? The, the two pelvic bones are called coxal bones. I'm not going to do the, there's three parts to them. I'm not going to do that. Um, what else? Vertebral column. So know the names for the types of vertebrae. So first seven are cervical. The middle 12, all the ones that are attached to the ribs are thoracic. The bottom five are lumbar. And then this wide bone is the sacrum. And then all the way at the end, this little tiny piece is the pocket, the tailbone. Okay, so that's most everything that is on the skeleton and then for the skull. There will be a couple of cranial bones and facial bones that I'll ask 
So cranial bone. Do you remember this one? Frontal bone, right? Right in the forehead. On the sides? Temporal. Yeah, temporal bones. The two at the top are parietal and then occipital in the back. Okay, and then facial bones, the nasal bones are the two bones that form the, the bridge of the nose. The remember the cheekbones? Zygomatic bone. The upper jaw is the maxilla, right? And the lower jaw is the mandible. Yeah. The really thin bone right here that you can see if you look inside the nasal cavity is the vomer. So as far as bone markings, this is going to be one, and it's going to be on the skull. It's either going to be a suture or one of two foramen that are on the lens. So the sutures, but this one, the coronal suture, the sagittal, the right down the top of the head, the one all around the temporal bone is the squamous or squamosal, either one suture, and then in the back, lambdoidal suture. So one of those, or the, remember the name for the hole in the chin, in the mandible? Mental foramen. Okay, there's two, one on each side. And then the other one that's on your list is the supraorbital foramen. So the name tells you where it's located. Supra means above, orbital refers to the orbit, which is the eye socket. So it's the two holes, right? above the eye socket, basically where the eyebrows are located. All right, so one of those bone markings would be on there. And then one last thing, and I don't believe they are in this room, but if you guys don't remember what they look like, I have these two bones in my office. It's the sphenoid and the ethmoid. None of the parts of the sphenoid or the ethmoid, but just I'll have one of those just sitting out, and you just have to tell me which one it is. Do you guys remember what they look like? They're the irregular bones that are in the skull. The, the ethmoid is like a circle and it just has like a bruise in it. It looks just like a walnut, it's like it has all those grooves and things that stick out. So it's about that big. And then remember the sphenoid is the one that looks like a bat. It has the greater wings and the lesser wings, like this big. So if anyone needs to see those, I can run to my office and get those two little bones, but just knowing which is which. So I will have one of those two to be able to identify which one. Okay, so that's it for skeletal system. Um, there is, I have four, I think, YouTube videos that I posted on Blackboard, like in your final lab practical folder, and one of them is me reviewing the skull. So that can help you, hopefully, with that section. Another one is me reviewing this model. This is a spinal cord cross section. So on this one, there's actually just one question from here. Um, so the, let me run this. The terms on your list that you need to know from there, there's just a few. So you need to first be able to identify which is the front side and which is the back side, because most of the structures are named based on if they're in the front or the back. So this is the front. When you're looking at the model, like if you're facing it, it's as if the person that this belongs to is facing you. So this is the front and this is the back. So anything on this side is gonna be named, or most everything that's on this side is gonna be named anterior or ventral, which are interchangeable terms for the front side. And then everything on this side is posterior or dorsal. So the parts of the gray matter that you can see in the spinal cord, this is the anterior gray horn, it's on the front side. This would be the posterior gray horn, it's on the back side. Um, this or this is the ventral root. We've got one on each side. And this one is the dorsal root, so it's in the back. The bulge that you see in the dorsal root is called the dorsal root ganglion. And where the two roots come together is a spinal nerve. Okay. 
the, you guys can't really see this well from here, but there is a hole that runs right through the middle of the model, and it's called the central canal. So it's a hole that goes all the way through the middle of the spinal cord, right through the middle of the gray matter. And then the gray matter that surrounds that hole is called the gray commissure. So it's the gray matter right in the middle, like here and here. So I do have the video where I point out all that stuff posted, so you can review that. Uh, what else? The vertebral column with the spinal nerve. There's one question on here. So if you guys know the types of vertebrae, then you can easily do this section. Um, the names of the spinal nerves are just named based on the vertebrae that they are coming out of. So here are the cervical vertebrae. So all of these are cervical spinal nerves. All of these middle 12 would be thoracic spinal nerves. The bottom five sets are lumbar spinal nerves. And then if you look at the back, so going into the, the holes in the sacrum, there's five sets of sacral spinal nerves. Push, bless you. And then the very last one, all the way at the bottom along the coccyx, is the coccygeal spinal nerve. Okay, then the holes in the sides of the vertebrae, like when the vertebrae are all stacked up, it forms holes in between them. So it's the holes that these spinal nerves are coming out of, you have them on both sides. That's called the intervertebral foramen. So a foramen is always a hole. So that's the holes that these nerves are coming out of, right? Um, and then you also have the transverse foramen on the list. That is the hole that goes through the transverse process. It's only in the cervical vertebrae. And going through those two holes are two arteries that go up the neck and they go up into the brain and supply blood to the brain. So that's what you're seeing here. See these two arteries? Those are the vertebral arteries. And they pass through the transverse foramen. So most likely, since I just have one question from that section, I'll just choose a group of spinal nerves to ask you guys. 